If you enjoy today's content, then please consider supporting Top Hat Gaming Man on Patreon. Yeah! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here, bringing you more obscure retro gaming trivia from the depths of the information superhighway. Slowly on this channel, I have been producing a series of videos covering the cancellation of various video game systems that were once set for production around the world. From Atari to Nintendo and Sega, we have looked at many of these contraptions, some of which were set for release by gaming giants. Every now and then though, we look at forgotten platforms from much lesser known manufacturers. This is the story of the Ultravision Video Arcade System. Yeah. In order to tell this story, we have to go all the way back to the very early days of home console gaming. The year is 1982, and the top selling system around is the Atari VCS, the classic pioneering games console that often featured a wood finish, and brought games into the home for the first time, such as Pac-Man and Space Invaders. The success of the Atari VCS with its interchangeable cartridges and ports of popular arcade games of the period, all in all made gaming more mainstream than it had ever been before. It was not too long after Atari had discovered this winning formula that other companies would start popping up in the console arena in a quest to take their throne. For the first time ever, everybody wanted a piece of the console with interchangeable cartridges pie. Amongst all of these challenges, two platforms really stood out. Firstly, the Mattel in television, which derived to the market quite early on in 1979, sporting superior graphics to that of the Atari system, and secondly, the ColecoVision that saw a release in 1982. Now, due to the release gap between the Atari VCS and the ColecoVision, by this point in time, there were quite wide gaps between how games looked on the Atari system and how they looked on ColecoVision. However, due to various market forces, the ColecoVision unfortunately never impressed consumers enough to take the VCS's crown. Which is a shame really, as it's a rather spiffing system for its time. But, what if I tell you there was an even more impressive North American system than the ColecoVision? That, if it released onto the market, could have potentially dethroned Atari. Now we have set the scene, let's look more at the system in question. But to do that, we need to discuss who bloody Ultravision are in the first place. Ultravision's overall impact on the gaming industry today is to be remembered as little more than an obscure games publisher for the Atari VCS, releasing only a few games for the system, such as Condor Attack and Karate. However, the company's ambition and backstory is a little more interesting, as they wanted to create a game console of their very own. In terms of this system, news of the Ultravision Video Arcade system first popped up in an advertisement in the November 1982 edition of Electronic Games Monthly. This promotional page shows the first image of this fabled device, sporting its very own built-in screen and two joysticks. The title of the page reads, We Challenge You, then goes on to state that the Ultravision is the latest in arcade quality video games challenges the competition to match our consumer satisfaction guaranteed. The ad also features promotional artwork for the game Condor Attack. Then below that it states our video game cartridges are the most advanced state of the art video game programming. They will excite you with their special effects, test your skills and challenge your powers of concentration. Or you can exchange for another video arcade system cartridge of equal value. Further to this there is also promotional artwork for the game Karate, and in a huge bold font we are told to convince ourselves by playing. Finally, the ad states that the games are for use with Ultravision's VAS, the Atari VCS and Sears Telegame system. The Ultravision was officially announced for release at the 1983 Consumer Electronics Show, with the slogan provided by the company, It's a computer, it's a colour TV, it's an arcade. It was clear from this marketing that the system would come with its very own built-in monitor with a combined game system, colour TV and personal computer. 
in some ways. This device reminds me of a couple of products that were successfully executed in 1984, such as the Milton Bradley Vectrix and the Amstrad CPC-464, two very different pieces of hardware, but each of which played games and came with their very own built-in monitors. You have to think this feature would have been highly desirable back in the day, as most homes only had one television set, and you didn't want it being hogged up by your idiot son playing his stupid games. No one had time for pencil neck geeks back then. The system was composed of a standard 10 inch colour television integrated with a games console and controlled by two 16 direction joysticks with top mounted buttons and came with a headphone jack. It could run off either AC or DC power making it portable by allowing it to run off a car battery. The home computer system would have had 64K of RAM, which could have been activated with an optional master keyboard. In addition to supporting its own line of game cartridges, the console was intended to have plug-in modules that would have supported the ColecoVision and Atari 2600 game libraries. Whilst this sounds strange now, as it would be bloody bizarre as hell if they released an add-on for the PS4 that let you play Switch games, this strangeness was not unknown back then. For example, you could buy a system add-on for your ColecoVision that let you play VCS games. The early days of console gaming was still very much the Wild West. Saying that, I guess there could have been a chance that this could have been above board. In more recent times, Pioneer gained the rights to release modules that let you play Mega Drive, Mega CD and PC Engine games, all on your laser active which is so cool for a 90s platform that it sounds like the works of science fiction. But, officially licensed or not, the UltraVision's ability to play games from various systems has been successfully executed by other console manufacturers. In terms of marketing, UltraVision once again placed an ad in EGM in January of 1983. This time, however, with no mention of the arcade system at all, but instead focusing on just the company's games. Condar Attack, is promoted heavily once again, along with Karate. But this time the article also mentions they have two further games coming soon, known as Spider Kong and Quest of the Idol. It would be the following month of February 1983 that the system would once again re-emerge amongst the pages of Electronic Gaming Monthly. This double page spread boasts all the bells and whistles we have already covered earlier on in this video and focuses heavily on what the UltraVision arcade system was planned to be capable of. The article touts bloody Condor Attack and Karate once again, this time showing off Condor Attack's box art. Apart from the games we have talked about, other games set for release on the system were set to include Baseball Top, B-52 Bomber, Daredevil Driver, Emergency Football, Space War, Swimming Contest and Unexpected Danger. How very exciting. One final piece of intriguing promotion and marketing for the system is the astronomical retail price of nearly $1,000, which is an outrageous amount of money for a gaming device in the early 80s. If the system had seen a release at this price, personally, I cannot have seen this all panning out very well at all. Especially when you take into account the North American Atari crash, which probably factored into this whole system's cancellation anyway. Another interesting element of this advertisement is that it actually shows a physical image of the hardware, which varies greatly from the hand-drawn images of the device the world had seen previously. This version sported the keyboard rather than just the joysticks, and the platform was looking very Amstrad CPC 464-like indeed. Ultimately, as we already know, the UltraVision was cancelled and never ever saw the light of day. As inferred, this all could have been partially down to the North American Atari crash. But further from this, what we know is that the Miami-based company, known as UltraVision, simply never managed to raise the finances to successfully launch this platform, reducing the system to nothing more than vaporware today. All in all, I must say as intriguing as the UltraVision seemed, when you look at the situation and circumstances, it is no wonder at all that this system remained as nothing more than a pipe dream. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of the UltraVision Arcade System, an interesting failed system project of the early 80s. We have looked at plenty of oddities like this on the channel before, such as the Conix Multisystem and the Halcyon, just for examples. 
So, if you are interested in watching either of those videos, you can find them in my cancelled consoles playlist. Let me know in the comment section which systems you would like to hear me talk about in the future. So don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell to see all of my in-depth weekly content. Finally, my channel Top Pack Gaming Man is partly funded from the fantastic support and donations I receive from my top notch Patreon supporters. So, shout outs in the credits to Carl Johnson, Suzuki Kobayashi, Greg Hooper, Synth Spaces, Kevin Verhaley, Andrew Bazanski, Edward O'Reilly, Tom Elliott, Marcus Hines, Lawrence C, The Gaming Muso, Spongebob Matt B, Quang DX, Stuart McDermott, JD Robbins, Michael Baker, Andy Aldridge, and all of my other patrons. You are continuously bringing me closer to my dream of going full-time on YouTube every single day. I can't wait.